Bernie Sanders went into the deep south and what happened? People loved him, right? So the mainstream media, the corporate Democrats tried to show Bernie as like, oh, he's, he's out of touch with, with the black community. So this article was written uh, in newyorkmagazine.com by Brianna Joy Gray. I follow her on Twitter and she was there with Bernie Sanders and she talks about um, that she went to, went to Memphis, Tennessee and Jackson, Mississippi um, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of, of Dr. King's assassination. And she, she, she marched with it and she just saw it. And she goes, the mainstream media isn't going to say this. He made one little comment in the mainstream media. Everyone on Twitter exploded. All the, you know, the, the hill bots, the robots that are just designed to go after Bernie all blew up. And here's a black woman who's a journalist who's like, that's not what I saw. That's not what I saw. And again, shows that Bernie's like, workers' rights policy and $15 an hour and Medicare for all, free college tuition resonates with everybody. The mainstream media, excuse me, wants to tell you that, you know, oh, that hippie socialism only works and doesn't work in the deep south and black people don't like him, you know, because that he's a threat, right? So the Democrats have been taking the black vote for granted. By the way, 2016 was the lowest turnout by black voters in 20 years. And here he is. This is a guy, this is why he's such a threat because progressivism, populism is such a threat. He can go to the deep south and he can, he can unite everybody. He goes to primarily white red state West Virginia and these white coal miners that all voted for Trump are like, wow, I like Bernie Sanders, right? And uh, black people in the south like him. And like, because they like his policies because he actually has policies that unite the country. And we can't have that. We can't have that. We can't have a guy go into a red state and unite working class people. No way, no way. So we better smear him, call him a racist, whatever else. We can't, you can never attack his policies. You gotta just attack all this other, now. Oh, let's go after his wife, let's this, that, and the other thing. So here's what was reported by this woman. Um, she said, Um, the media coverage of his trip has revolved around a brief aside in which Sanders faulted the Democratic Party for its recent legislative failures. Right? Here's what he said. The business model, if you like, of the Democratic Party for the last 15 years or so has been a failure. People sometimes don't see that because there was this charismatic individual named Barack Obama. He was obviously an extraordinary candidate, brilliant guy, but behind that reality over the last 10 years, Democrats have lost about a thousand seats in the state legislature across the country. All facts. What happened on Twitter? Um, a former South Carolina representative, Bakari Sellers, accused Sanders of arrogance and dismissing President Obama, right? It's unbelievable. It's, there's, this is what else the guy said. Uh, almost unprecedented loss of legislated seats over the last 10 years of Hillary, yeah. It's just like, that's how they went after him on Twitter, right? So, and this is what this woman says. As I walked with Sanders down Memphis' famous thoroughfare, his popularity, including among the predominantly black crowd attending the commemorative festivities, was self-evident. The senator was stopped every few feet by selfie seekers and admirers. Yes, perhaps this is to be expected of any politician with a national profile. But given his poor showing in Mississippi during the 2016 Democratic primary, in which he secured less than 17% of the black vote, I had thought the senator... Um, and his small cohort might go unnoticed. I was wrong. Even though a recent poll found Sanders support among African Americans and Hispanics to be strong, I was surprised. Although I, a black woman, was a supporter of Sanders in the 16 Democratic primary, on some level, I had succumbed to the persistent narrative that Sanders has a, quote, black problem, quote. The claim is that Bernie Sanders, who does indeed appear more comfortable explaining how class-based programs can benefit the 99% than discussing the struggles endemic to historically marginalized communities simply doesn't get us. So I asked Sanders what he thought about critics who say he seems to care more about white voters than people of color. It's just not true, he said. 
Sanders explained that he believes his agenda, which includes Medicare for All and free public education, will have especially profound and positive effect on communities of color. And he's right. Blacks and Latinos are respectively two and three times more likely to be uninsured than whites. And although black Americans are about as likely to enroll in college at a higher rate than any other racial group, we are less likely to matriculate, in part due to difficulty for paying for college. Having said that, he continued, is racism a very significant and powerful force in American society that has got to be addressed? The answer is absolutely. Will a Medicare for all or single payer system end racism in America? No, it won't. So above and beyond moving forward on strong national programs, we've got to pay special attention to communities of color, which are especially hurting right now. Oh, he didn't call the black community his firewall like Hillary did? Sanders went on to cite the racial wealth gap, the disproportionate in incarceration of black Americans and the unequal public education system, which plagues low income communities. Hillary can't talk about more black people behind bars because she backed her husband's three strikes you're out policy. She went on a media binge in the 90s when he was president, which is all that bullshit when, when, when Hillary supporters say, oh, you, that's sexist to say she just went, you know, her husband. So that means that's who she is. Um, when she goes on national TV and supports it, that's not sexist. That's evidence that she supported her husband's policies while he was president. She helped push them publicly. It's a marketing strategy. So yes, she is accountable for that. So it's a great article and, a great, and, and pointing out a great thing. Um, and it shows you the power of progressive populist policies. And again, support the policy, not the politician. If Bernie is wavering or acquiescing to the DNC too much, I get it if you want to bail on him. I get it. But his policies, we got to get behind if he's still pushing them. And I'll get behind whoever is pushing these policies. Here's the last paragraph in this article. Framed this way, Sanders' frequent focus on universal programs seems less of an evasion of our nation's obligation to remedy the the harms it has inflicted on marginalized groups, and more an effort to provide the redistributive remedies people of color have long demanded. If he can convince more people of color that he's right, he might surprise the Democratic Party again in 2020. People are ready for this cat, man. They are ready. They are ready. But the DNC ain't gonna let him run again. They're gonna push somebody else in there and he needs to run. He needs to run as an independent. That's my opinion. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. And he could become president as an independent because he'll be going against Trump and whatever corporate neoliberal the DNC tries to jam down our throats. So many of the nation's problems can be flat out fixed or improved or minimized even by redistributing the wealth. Racism, sexism, crime, drug use, all of it. If you got a decent job and you have hope and opportunity and you can go to school, do you really need to get become a drug addict? Yes, there'll still be addiction. That's a, that's a physical, it's a, it's a medical issue. It's not a criminal issue. But when you have no choice and there's your, your life is bleak, of course you're gonna to wanna to get high. <laughs> you give people opportunity at a better life, they're gonna take it. Most people are gonna take it. Some people, there's always gonna be people that fuck up, but most people are gonna take it. And what he's offering is a threat to the oligarchy. It's a threat to the military industrial complex. It's a threat to the pharmaceutical companies. It's a, th it's a threat to privatized prisons. Right? That's why he's a threat. And I applaud this article and I'm glad that some, because the mainstream media won't, will, will always go after him. Or any, whoever, if somebody, if another progressive gets more popular than him, they'll go after them. If Tulsi gets that popular, if Nina gets that, they'll, they'll, they've already gone after those women. So, uh, yeah. I'm glad she covered this article and I'm glad you guys are watching the show and supporting it. Don't forget to subscribe. YouTube is unsubscribing you at an alarming rate. They're saying you're not watching as much. They're saying I'm losing subscribers, which is nonsense. Don't let the corporate state defeat this channel. They're trying to.